other questions? What do you have at the Salem Public Library that you refer to? Ah, uh, I, uh, when I, let's see, 1979, 78, 79, 80, I got a CETA grant. At the time of Jimmy Carter. Yeah, yeah. Remember the CETA grants? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I got one for bird painting, <laughs> being an artist. <laughs> and uh, and I donated all my work to the Salem Public Library, to George Happen. Oh. I don't remember George, but he was a wonderful man, and he promoted me, and he gave me a show there. He gave me a retrospective. It was called 10 Years in the Pacific Northwest. And I showed my works there. And I was at that time, I was just before National Geographic time, before I went back east. It was really a wonderful period. And I was just beginning to get into painting big paintings, oil paintings, things like that. You can go see them, and they're in the, the far northern end of the library in the reading rooms. Uh, they have a reading room that has, I don't know, uh, two dozen. It's a historical room or something it's called. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the name of the room? Anyway, it's one of those closed glass areas for reading. On the first floor, right as you come in the entrance through the gate there. Yeah. I was on the committee that hired George, so thank you for the board. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it turns out, he's on a committee over the Strop Center where my hand veins are hanging. And he recognized my work. What I just heard this tonight. This is terrific. He was a great man. So happy that he was in charge of the library at that time because they promoted me and my work. Any other questions? Yeah, back there. I understand you, uh, when you were a boy, you were a neighbor to Roger Tory Peterson? I was. I was not a neighbor to him. Uh, he, at that time, had just published his Field Guide to the Birds, his first, well, it wasn't his first edition, whatever it was. But he was coming up and down the line to New York City and then to a lot of little Audubon Society groups, giving bird walks and so on as field guide. Oh. Yeah, so I lived in the, uh, near the town of Fairfield, and they had a little museum in Fairfield run by a man named Mr. Novak, Frank Novak. He was a taxidermist, and he put this wonderful museum of birds up. And it was run by the Fairfield uh, Garden Club and Audubon Society. So as a kid, my father took me there, I went, could go and see these stuffed birds in the museum, and I went crazy. <laughs> and um, I got to meet Roger Peterson many times. Uh, he would come and give these bird walks, and I wanted to go on all the bird walks he gave. And I got to know him generally lightly as a, as a boy, uh, and he inspired me. His, he inspired me about birds more than about art. His work at that time was not painterly. They were just figures on a page. But I, we had a hiatus of time. I went to college, went to high school, college, and, um, and became an illustrator and got to meet Roger Peterson again through my friend Don Eckleberry. And, well, Mr. Eckleberry uh, was a very famous bird artist. I know you have seen his work. He was, in the, he was a... Um, competitor to Roger Peterson. There was a Western guy, I think it's by Poe, might have been the, been the author. But uh, he became my mentor. And all the bird artists kind of like had a click around New York City. They were all illustrators, all, all working for the publishing houses, you know. Um, and so I got to meet Roger again, and we became friends. And Roger, in his latter years, really promoted a lot of people, a lot of things that you, the ABA, all of, all these publications. Originally, he was the man behind it. He was the one that promoted these young fellows in birding and in art, both. He was a great man. I'm highly honored in my life to have known him, to know him intimately. I can tell you one little anecdote. I was at AOU meeting in Seattle, and I was living my first couple of years in the Northwest. AOU. AOU, American Ornithological Union. And they had a little bird art show up there, so a lot of my works were in there. And Roger put a few in too. And, uh, and Don Eckleberry, we all had works in there. And I was all very proud to be hanging with these guys, hanging, hanging out with Literally. them, and to be hanging in the show with them. <laughs> but 
every one of them hadn't played with acrylics yet. I was the only one playing with them and looking at her practice. So well, we had a party in Don Eckleberry's room. He was, he was one for parties. And uh, and it was flowing pretty well. <laughs> and so we were, uh, I had to give a demonstration. They forced me to give a demonstration of acrylics. Uh, so, uh, so my wife went back to the house in town and got, got the paints. And I, on the toilet, in Don Huckleberry's room, I gave a demonstration of acrylics. <laughs> To Roger Terry Peterson. <laughs> I have a question of the audience here. Uh, we advertise this program both in the birding community as usual, but also in the artist community. Have any, are any of you responding to from the art community? Okay. We got more. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, arts. Oh, great. So Marnie Jeffers sent me the email. She got the she got the email from the group from somebody who forwarded to her, and she it out to all our art friends. Yay, well, her. welcome. I'm glad you were here. I was just going to say, we were talking a lot about Roger Torrey Peterson. Um, you, he was the put together the first uh, birding handbook in 1934. Uh, and he was the model that everybody has copied ever since then. I mean, right. it's amazing. He's a, you know, the father of, of our modern birding. Because, because he invented field marks. Yes, right. Like yeah, and those are copyrighted. Uh -huh. We could not use that in a National Geographic book. Huh. You know, that's. I was saying uh, about points on my on, on birds of that Greek picture. I wanted to put marks on. They said, "No, we can't do that." Roger's got to cover it. Yes, I'm actually a bird photographer, but. I started out as an oil artist, and I haven't drawn or painted in 35 years. And I came tonight because I'm leaving for Florida next month for three months. Good. And I'm taking my brushes and my knives, <laughs> and I'm going to work you. down in Venice at the Great Blue Nest and the Great White Nest. Okay. You've inspired me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Do some good drawing. You saw me in that little movie on the tracing paper, uh -huh. uh, overlay paper. Yeah. Get yourself some of that when you get down there. Yeah. I actually, when I started in oils at Rutgers University, they said, pack away your oils, go get a black and white drawing class, and draw in black and white, and learn how to shade. Because people make the mistake of shading with color and not understanding how to shade. That's right. And only black and white will teach you. Uh, only black and white will teach you. You have to learn how to show that. I have to have a, I, I often now with the computer, make a black and, a black and white rendition of an image I've taken of my color work to see if it's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. If it doesn't come out in black and white, I got to do something that painting. Well, I ended up as a stone lithographer instead of being an oil artist. <laughs> well, go ahead and paint. Just, just have that. Work, work big. Well, folks, the time has it's come here, but um, uh, Jan will be around for our break, and uh, please uh, continue the, the questions here. We're really privileged tonight to have the marrying of art and science together and his personage and the work that he's done. So feel free to look at them all. Uh, some of the books that uh, he published in, uh, his business cards are there if you want to uh, look at some of his uh, website, see what's going on. And we have a little flyer about the Straub Center display somewhere, we'll, we'll get you that out. You have a flyer for the Straub Center? Right, yes. Right oh. On the, on the wooden table right there, I think. We'll get it out. Over there. Sorry, wooden oh, table. Oh, if you want to oh, see uh, another one display. One more question. Yeah. Well, could you just like, rattle off the email address so I can just write Thank it down? You. If the cards run out, I might not get it. You, you mean the website address, right? For your... And the card's gone? No, she hasn't gotten it. But they may oh, run out. <laughs> here. We, got, we still got a bunch of cards here. Oh, well, I didn't want to deny anybody. Well, well no, no, no. You, you ask first. Okay, we're going to take a break now for... Uh, hold on. What? We just have to Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take a break.
had a reminder that everybody 